Okay, so we are here in downtown Boulder, uh, a bit off of Pearl Street, I think. Um, and this is the, one of the many offices of the NVIDIA Corporation, NVIDIA. Um, it, the main offices, I believe, in, are in Santa Clara, Cali uh, Ca California, but there are about 50 offices internationally, also in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Toronto, Canada. Um, but so we're here in Boulder. They have another office in Colorado Springs. And we're here because NVIDIA is known as uh, really a pioneer in uh, cards for graphics, um, computer graphics, and increasingly also in uh, high performance computers for machine learning and neural nets. And so as we're building out the metaverse, <laughs> wow, in the rain, <laughs> as we're building out the metaverse, um, the graphics cards are gonna be central to all of this and the high powered computing. And um, I just wanted to take a moment because if you look at the logo of NVIDIA, it's actually, um, an eye. It's sort of this angular, like spiraling eye that's green and white. And I, I just wanted to take a moment to read what it talks about um, the origin of the name of NVIDIA. Um, this is from a website that's anal analyzing the logo. And it says, if you're into mythology, you have probably heard of the term NVIDIA, I-N-V-I-D-I-A, which means sense for envy in Latin. In Greek mythology, a titan named Nemesis was known to be in control of black magicians and witches. And when the Italians seized Greece, they were less left speechless by the beauty of Nemesis. Thus, they christened her Invidia and portrayed her aptly dressed in green. And so this is the, the visual identity is around this all-seeing eye that has connection to sort of black magicians and um, and witches and uh, stunning people. And so I think as we imagine the metaverse as being a space, a space that's being, we're being lured into um, through this sort of enchantment qualities, uh, it's important to know that uh, there's sort of a through line here. So NVIDIA is connected to a company called Cesium, uh, C-E-S-I-U-M, -E -S -S like the, the chemical, cesium, and it's interesting because cesium is also going to be part of the atomic clock that we'll visit at NIST later. But cesium is a company in Philadelphia that uh, is in partnership with NVIDIA and they do simulation software. And so they build virtual worlds and they build them for uh, purposes of, you know, military simulations, real estate development simulations, uh, weather simulations, uh, and video games. They build them for all sorts of things. And one of the projects that they uh, featured on their website was this idea of building, using various automated processes to knit together photographs of built environments, actual built environments that people just take on their cameras. And uh, then they knit it together into a virtual gamified world. And one of those projects was actually here in downtown Boulder. And so they, they had 20 volunteers volunteer to go around downtown Boulder in a certain area and take phone folder uh, photos with their phones and send them. And then they knit them together essentially uh, with an automated process into a virtual world space. And so that's the kind of thing NVIDIA provides the support in terms of the graphics processing and the computing. And then um, Cesium does the software and the assembling. Now, we were just listening to a podcast on the way over. Uh, it was the Cesium Company's podcast with uh, representatives of NVIDIA. And they had long histories both with Intel and with Magic Leap Virtual Reality and with Pixar. So one of the main people talking on the podcast had 18 years with Pixar. And we know Pixar has ties back to the University of Utah as well, so it's this virtual world simulation all the way back to the Utah teapot. Um, and what they had developed at Pixar was something called uh, the Universal Scene Descriptor, Universal Scene Descriptor, USD. And so their, their idea is to create templates and infrastructure that allow many people to work on designing these virtual worlds and to create open source access points where um, sort of data is, data is freely enmeshed in virtual worlds um, because to build out the metaverse, it's gonna take many, many, many people. And so what's happening now is that they're, they're building that apparatus and they're building it through the graphical design, through um, the universal, it's creating the standards, creating the standards that underlay the metaverse. And they are hoping that that will be the main standard that goes moving forward. Um, and then within that, uh, Pixar, Beyond setting up the universal screen uh, scene description, uh, they were involved with something uh, called Maya. <laughs> and Maya software was developed in connection with Autodesk, and they were used to actually develop characters in gaming environments. They call them character rigs. And it's quite interesting because the word Maya, in addition to being um, 
you know, the, the, the Central American civilization um, is also in Sanskrit. The, the term Maya is used as um, the world in all of its distractions. And then the goal within um, is to move beyond the distractions of the world towards enlightenment and to sort of to escape the Maya context and then move beyond. And Maya is also anything that appears, the, the, the tendency to regard appearances as, as reality. So that which we see, we, we imagine that we are really outside the NVIDIA headquarters. <laughs> but perhaps that is not the actual reality. Like if we were enlightened enough, we would be beyond the material world. And so there's this element of wordplay um, and visual play in the word choices both for these computer programs and how they're being set up that has this sort of um, subtext, you know, in a, a, a playful and potentially sinister subtext in terms of luring us into the enchantment and having us view this enchantment as reality, right? And and Pixar, again, just like Lego and these other, Crayola, these wonderful brands we've, we've come to embrace. Um, and, and before Pixar moved out onto its own, it was embedded within Lucasfilm. So George Lucas, and we, we can talk about that a little bit later, but um, out of the, the hero's journey of, of Star Wars and that whole industrial complex, uh, we were led to embrace all of that. But now it's pivoting into uh, using your education process, process for children, um, engaging with digital media that is gamified uh, and tied into global brands and global narrative constructs uh, to mine us for our creativity and our souls and our spirits to go into this metaverse to essentially train the robots to be robots. And that's, that was part of the, 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 the podcast was they were saying, in addition to creating the metaverse um, simulation worlds and places where you could design experiences, um, that it all the data in there is used to train artificial intelligence. So I think that's probably it for, for today, but um, later on at, we're going to go to NIST where the focus is time and frequency. And as I was talking with Jason, who has a bit more expertise in working with these graphical interfaces, we were, we were talking about the idea that in this model they're developing with the universal scene descriptor, you could create uh, virtual worlds that you could access. Uh, by subscription, because a lot of this is going to be conditional access. Not everybody gets access to the whole virtual world. It's only going to be um, that you are allowed access to the parts that you're given access to, right? And so say you have a virtual street corner, you can have a street corner and many people renting that street corner, um, they could be renting it concurrently because there are different um, virtual cameras that are recording the, the interactions on that street corner and they could all be happening at once but invisible to one another and so they're like these layers like multi-worlds on top of one another <coughs> and so that starts to sort of bend your conception of time and experience and collective experience if reality begins to blend into these digital worlds in ways that our minds are not fully prepared to contemplate at this point um, unless you're a programmer and you understand how it all works. Um, but it's quite an amazing business model. Imagine if you could rent, you know, a virtual office park <laughs> to a hundred different people for a hundred different uses all at the same time. Like there's some actually some crazy profit margin things potentially going on here. Um, assuming it's all, it's all open source, but then it's also all by paid sub subscription ultimately. So um, anyway, yeah, NVIDIA, uh, the all seeing eye, uh, the eye of enchantment that's attached to um, gamification and Pixar and virtual reality.